In this lecture, you're going to learn what is a function constructor and what is its use in JavaScript. In the last lecture, we learned that one of the concepts of object-oriented programming is that we create a blueprint and based on that blueprint, we instantiate several objects. For example, let's say this person is a blueprint and this person, this blueprint has this name property, birth year property, gender property and calculate age method. Now, based on this blueprint, we want to create objects like John, Mary, and Steve. And if you notice, this John, Mary, and Steve also have the same properties and same methods. That is name, birth year, gender, and the calculate age method. And for these objects, we have also specified the value for those properties. Now, when we create an object based on a blueprint, in that case, that object is called as an instance of that blueprint. So here, this John, Mary and Steve objects have been created from this person blueprint. So this John, Mary and Steve is an instance of this person blueprint. And in JavaScript, we can define a blueprint or a template like this person using function constructors. Okay. So a function constructor is a pattern in JavaScript based on which we can create several objects. So in simple terms, a constructor function is simply a function which acts as a pattern or a template for creating objects. With constructor, constructor function, we can instantiate objects and implement inheritance. And to define a constructor function, a function is used. It can be a normal function or a function expression. Now, why do we need a constructor function or why do we need to create a blueprint to instantiate objects? Well, so far in this course, we have been creating objects using object literal like this. So here I am creating three objects, John, Mary and Steve. And in order to create these three objects, I am using object literals. Now, if you notice, all these three objects has the same property and also the same method and the implementation of this method is also same now if we have to create 100 objects like this with the same property name and method then doing it is a cumbersome task using object literals so that is not a very efficient way of creating objects and that's why we define a template and based on that template we can instantiate n number of objects and we can instantiate those objects using a single line of code. And that's why we need a template or a blueprint. And in JavaScript, that template or that blueprint is created using function constructors. So enough theory. Let's see how to create a function constructor in JavaScript. In order to create a function constructor, we use a regular function or a function expression. So let me use function expression and let's call this function constructor person. Now the convention here to name a function constructor is that we use Pascal case, you know, Pascal case notation. That means the first letter of the constructor name should be in caps like I'm doing here. All right, then let's use this function keyword. Now, here, this function, inside this function, we are going to specify some properties. And the value for those properties will come as an argument for this function. So, let's say the objects which we will create using this blueprint will have three properties. Name, year of birth and gender. And the value for those properties will come as an argument for this function. So, Inside this function, let's specify some parameters like name, gender, and birth year. Now you can name your parameter anything. Okay. And inside this function, we specify those properties and we specify the properties using this keyword. So we say this dot name. So we want to have a name property for the objects. So we say this dot name. And the value for this name property will come as an argument for this function constructor. Okay, that means in this name vary, I mean name parameter. So let's assign it with that 
value. Similarly, we also want to have the gender property for our object and the value for this gender property will come as its argument, this gender argument. So let's assign the value which we will receive in this gender argument to this gender property. Okay. And finally, we also want to have the birth year property. So this dot birth year. And from where the value of this birth year will come? It will come as the third argument for this function. Okay. So let's copy this and let's assign to this birth year property. And that's it. Here we have created a blueprint. Now in this blueprint, we have only specified the properties for the object which we want. But we can also specify methods. So let's also specify a method for this. Let's say this dot calc age. Okay. And to this, let's assign a function. And inside this function, let's say return. And we want to return the age. So for that, we want to get the current year. And in order to get the current year, we can say new date. And on this date, you know, it will return us the current date. And on that, we, we can call this get full year method. And let's subtract the birth year from this get full year. So this dot birth year. Okay. And let's also log or, you know, instead of returning the value, let's create a variable. Let's call it age. Okay, and let's log this age here itself in this calc age method. So console.log age. Okay, so now we have created a blueprint and this blueprint has three properties, name, gender, birth year, and it has a method called calc age. Now remember that a function is also an object in JavaScript, right? That means this person, this person function constructor, which we have just created, it is also an object. So now we have created this person blueprint using function constructor. And this person blueprint has this name, birth year, gender property, and calculate age method. Now, based on this person function constructor, this person blueprint, we also want to instantiate several objects like John, Mary and Steve. So how we will instantiate objects using this blueprint? Let's see that. Let's say we want to create John object using this function constructor. Okay, using this person function constructor. For that, let's first create this John variable. And now we want to create a John object. So to create an object, using a function constructor first we need to use this new keyword followed by the name of the constructor now what is the name of the constructor here it is person okay now here when we call this person function constructor we will also have to specify the value for these parameters name gender and birth here okay so let's pass those values let's say john gender is male and birth here is 1990 and that's it here we have created a john object now i hope this syntax might look a bit familiar to you so if you remember when we create a date object we create a variable and then we use new keyword followed by the date constructor remember so this date is also a function constructor just like this person function constructor similarly if you remember we have also created strings like this so new string right this string is also a function constructor okay so this date and this string function constructor is provided by javascript but here this person function constructor is a user defined function constructor. All right. So let's comment this here. Okay. So here we have created this John object. Now let's see if this John object has been created. 
So let's say console.log and let's say let's log this John object. If I save the changes in the developer console, you can see that this John object has been logged with these values. So the values which we have passed to this person function constructor. So we have the name property and it is set to John. We have the gender property set to male. We have the birth year property set to 1990. And we also have this calc age method. Okay. Now here it says person. And why is that? That is because this John, this John object is an instance of this person object. Okay. Let's also call this calc age method on this John object. So before this console.log, let's say john.calc age. Let's see if it works. Okay, so it is working as expected and it has returned the age of John, which is 31. Okay, so here we are creating only one object. And if you notice, this object has been created by using a single line of code. If we have to create more objects like Mary and Steve, we can again do it. So let's create this Mary object. And again, we need to use new operator followed by the name of the constructor. So name of the constructor is person. Now let's pass value for the parameters of this person constructor. So name is Mary. Then gender is female. And then let's say Mary was born in 1995. Okay, so here we have created this Mary object. Let's also log this in the developer console. So Mary. And if we save the changes, here you can see this Mary object has been logged in the developer console. And the values which we have passed as the argument for this person constructor that has been assigned to this, to the properties of that object. Okay, so this name property is assigned with this value Mary. Gender properties assigned with this value female and birth year properties assigned with this value 1995. And it also has this Mary object also has this calcage method. Now, the next question is, how does this function constructor works? And what is the use of this new operator while creating objects using a function constructor? Well, a new operator does three things while creating an object using function constructor. The first thing it does is it creates an empty object on the function constructor. So let me comment this code here. Okay. And let's also comment these two line of codes. Now, when we say let John equals new person, the first thing which this new operator will do is it will create an empty object and it will be similar to like writing let John equals. Okay, so here we are creating an empty object and this will happen internally behind the scenes. Then it also makes sure that this variable inside the function constructor points to the newly created empty object. Okay. So this new operator will make sure that this variable here inside this function constructor points to the newly created empty object and the newly created empty object in this case is, is this John object. Okay. So it will set this variable to point to John object. Now, when we are creating this name, gender and birth year property on this John object, it will be similar to writing John dot name because now this variable is pointing to John object, right? So when we say this dot name, it is similar to writing John dot name and then assigning the value which we have received for this name property. Now, what value we have received here? We have received this value John. Okay. Similarly, on this John object, another property will be created, which is gender and it will be assigned to male. Okay, and then this John ob on this John object, this birth year property will be created and it will be assigned to the value which we have passed for this birth year parameter that is 1990. And also on this John object, 
a new method will be created which is calc age okay and it will be assigned with the function definition which we have specified here all right so the second thing which this new operator does is it makes sure that this variable inside this function constructor points to the newly created empty object okay so in this case first the new operator will create an empty john object and then it will make sure that this variable inside this function constructor points to this empty john object and once that happens inside this function we are setting properties for that john object and finally it also returns the object from the function constructor so once the properties and methods are set on that object okay so here this variable is pointing to john object so once the properties and methods are set on this john object it will also return that object okay so it will be similar to writing return this now this here is pointing to john object so john object will be returned from here and that will be assigned to this john variable and this will happen internally we don't have to explicitly write this okay so the new operator does three things first it will create an empty object then it will make sure that the, this variable inside the function constructor points to that empty object and finally once the properties and methods are set it will return that object so this is how a function constructor works okay now let's uncomment these codes from here so let's log this john object and let's also uncomment this code and let's also create one more object let's call it steve and again new operator and then the function constructor which we want to call so person and here let's specify the values for the parameters so name is steve steve is male and let's say he was born in 1989 all right let's log this steve object in the developer console let's save the changes okay so here we have john object mary object and steve object and all these three objects is an instance of this person object right because we have created these objects from this person object now if i expand all these three objects we'll have name gender and birth year property and calculate age method similarly this uh, mary object also has this name gender and birth year property and calculate age method and the steve object also has this name uh, gender and birth year property and calculate age method but if you notice the definition of this calculate age method will remain same for all these three objects right we are not you know this definition will not differ for different objects it will remain same for all these objects so here we are again violating the drive principle now this problem can be resolved using inheritance so in the next lecture you will learn how we can make this john mary and steve object inherit this calcage function instead of having their own definition for calcage method so this is all from this lecture if you have any question feel free to ask it thank you for listening have a great day